Hey everybody, well, as you can see, I'm back with the brand new tutorials and today we're going to make a pouring hot chocolate and we're going to use Bifrost and Maya. Here we go. This video has been made possible by BenQ. If you're a digital artist in need of a professional grade monitor, then check out BenQ.com. Okay guys, well, this is going to be so much fun because tons of people asked me to do this video and I've been wanting to do it for quite a while, but finally it's there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to use Bifrost to create a very thick, gooey uh, liquid, right? Something like maybe motor oil or syrup or glue or thick paint, that kind of thing, right? Now, um, that said, um, what we want is we want to cover something with that fluid, right? So we're going to take uh, just a random object. We'll take a, a torus, why not? And it's sitting there just fine. And we're going to go in here and kind of raise it up a little bit. So it's sitting on the grid. And there you go. And we're going to run that over with glue, basically. Yeah. Now, the way Bifos works is you need to have an emitter to emit um, fluid, right? So we'll take a random object. We'll just take a, uh, I don't know, take a cube and we'll uh, bring that up and that's going to emit our fluid. Now, one thing you need to notice though, when you're working with Bifrost and that is scale. Now, if we click on the little running man in the bottom right corner right here and I go in and I go to my settings, you'll see that I'm set to centimeters. So each square is a centimeter by a centimeter on the grid. Now, the thing is with Bifrost is it has a different skill setup. Uh, the cube that is one by one is basically a cube of one by one meter according to uh, Bifrost, which is a bit big. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna set that to 0.5, which is still quite big, but it's doable, right? So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and 0.5, and there you go. Now, What's next? Well, we want this thing to move. I mean, if the glue is coming straight down, that's no fun, right? So we're gonna jump in here, we're gonna go in here, and I'm gonna kind of move that down a little bit. And we're gonna start somewhere around here. That should be fine. On my animation slider, I'm gonna go all the way to the left, and I'm gonna hit S to keyframe that, right? Now, I want this to go over our torus, let's say, in a period of, I don't know, three seconds maybe? something like that so roughly around 75 mark right there you go so i'm going to move this over to let's say here and i'm going to hit s on my keyboard again now i'm going to set my range to 75 which is fine because that's all we got and we're going to do a dry test run so back to frame one let's hit play and there you go our cube or our emitter is going over our torus fine we're going to jump back. We're going to check out our perspective view. Okay, so it's time to introduce the actual liquid. Now, like I said, this is a Bifrost emitter, so this guy needs to emit fluid. I have it selected. I'm going to go up to FX menu. I'm going to go to Bifrost fluids, click on liquid. There you go. And it will create a liquid box for that. And we're simply going to hit play and see what happens. Okay. And you see the cube moving, but you don't really see any liquids. Now, the reason for that is simple. If you go back, the reason is that if we look at the liquid properties and we open up the attribute editor, you'll see that the voxel size is set to 0 0.5. Now, I mentioned that the skill in Bifrost is meters. So every drop of, uh, well, not drop, but every voxel of glue is half a meter by half a meter, right? Which is a bit big. So instead of 0 0.5, we'll do 0 0.05. And once we do that, you see that we suddenly see these blue dots, okay? Now we're gonna hit play and see what happens. Our cube will run over, but you see that there's not really any liquid coming out. And it only does that for a very short period of time, just in the beginning of the sequence. Okay, let's give this a sec. So it can kind of cash out. Now it's acting smoother. And you see for a very brief second that we've got fluid going on. We're gonna jump back to frame one. The reason for that is it's not continuously emitting voxels. It only does that one time and then it's done, okay? So we need to change that. So we're gonna to go to the emitter properties. We're gonna go in here and we're gonna to go to properties and we're gonna click on continuous emission. Click on that and hit play again. 
And as we do that, you see that it starts to create fluid and dump it all the way down, right? Let's stop that. Now, we have one issue here, and that is that Bifrost can be a bit finicky when it comes to continuous emission. Sometimes it's turned on, it's not responding, you have to turn it off, turn it on again. It's kind of a pain. If that happens, I'll uh, just stop the video, fix it, and go back, right? But just so you're aware. Now, you see that the fluid runs all the way down. We don't want that because all these voxels down here are being calculated, and we don't need them, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce what they call a kill plane. So I'm going to drag select this guy right here, make sure it's stopped, yeah? And we're going to go up to Bifrost, and we're going to select Kill Plane. And there you go. And it creates this little square thingy underneath our torus. Basically what that does is when voxels come to that point, they stop being generated. So we're going to go in here and we're going to hit play again. Let's see what happens. And let's see if our emitter is actually still continuously emitting. Let's give that a second. Okay, there we go. You see that the voxels stop when they hit the kill plane. And you see that the cube is generating uh, voxels. And now you see that the continuous emitter is stopping. Let me fix that. So again, go to um, uh, emitter properties. I think that's the one, yeah. So we're gonna hit play. That's how you fix this. You hit play, you turn it off and then you turn it on again. And that should fix the problem. And it does. Okay, so that's working. Now, what we want next is for the fluid to actually interact with our torus, because right now it doesn't even notice it, okay? So we're gonna select this guy, we're gonna shift select our torus, and it seems that it's still running, yeah? And we're gonna go up to Bifrost, and we're gonna go and create a collider, like so. We jump back to frame one, we're going to play, and of course that emitter, let me fix that. And now it should respond with our torus. And it does. Perfect. Okay. Let's stop that. Let's jump back to frame one. So hit escape. That's how you stop it. Yep. Yeah. So the next problem is this. Um, okay, so we have a fluid, it's emitting, it's going over our torus, but it doesn't look anything like glue because it's, uh, it's dots, they're voxels, right? It's not a mesh. So what we need to do is we need to change that. So we're gonna go in here to Bifrost Liquid. We're gonna select Liquid. We're gonna hit A to open up the Attribute Editor. And we have the option in here at Liquid Shape to go in and it says Bifrost Meshing. And we're going to enable that. And when we do that, the voxels will turn into an actual mesh. And I'll hit play, and it will take some time. And there you go. You see that now it's an actual mesh, right? Sometimes the first time it runs, it will kind of quit before it gets there. But this seems to be OK. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. And you see that it's responding nicely, OK? So let's uh, hit Escape. And stop all that. Yeah, good, good. And the next thing we want to do is we want to kind of alter the appearance of the glue. Now, the way you can do that is changing the viscosity. Make it more, um, not sticky, but more gooey, I guess. I don't know how else to explain that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the liquid properties. Yeah. And let's see what we can do here. Uh, so we have our voxel size. We have... Um, our viscosity down here. So it's set to zero right now. Let's bump that up quite a bit. Let's set that to 300. And depending on what you want, whether you want to have something that's very thick or maybe a bit less, you can tweak those uh, settings, right? So let's hit play. Let's hope that emitter is still working. And of course it is not. Here we go again. Yeah, there you go. So it's much thicker as you can see. And the interesting part is to see how it will interact with the torus. And the kill plane is working fine. And it's responding nicely. Very good. Okay, cool. So we'll have that run its course for a second.
Yeah, very cool. Okay, so we're gonna hit escape. And then finally, what you can do is you can change the look of the material. So first of all, this cube, like I said, you can hide that, right? You can hide it in the neck of a bottle, something like that. But um, yeah, more importantly, we want this to look a little bit more like glue, right? So we're gonna select this guy, we're gonna right click, go to assign a new material because it's now a simple mesh. So you can apply an um, Arnold material, but in this case, I'll just do a Lambert, right? We'll change the color to white. And then we'll go in here and uh, yeah, we might want to change some other uh, values here, but we'll see. For now, it's fine. Uh, actually, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll do a blend. Come on, blend, blend. Yeah, we'll do a blend. So we can go in there and you know, if you want it to be a bit more shiny, that we can play with that, right? You got some specularity going on here. So let's see if the emitter is still working. Probably not. Well, it is actually, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's stop it right there. So that looks very nice. Now that is basically how you do that guys. So hopefully you find some good use for this. Like I said, there are tons and tons of things you can use this for, uh, like for oil, like for fuel, um, I don't know, glue, paint, all that kind of cool stuff, yeah? So please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please hit that like button and subscribe if you didn't do that already, right? Thank you so much for watching, as always, and see you guys next time. Bye.